I'm Wendy Hartsock, science and peptide enthusiast. In this episode of Exploration Science, we learn about some of the challenges and opportunities in oligonucleotide manufacturing from a company that most of us associate with peptide science. Dr. Daniel Sampson, the vice president and head of oligonucleotides at Bachem, discusses strategy, timing, infrastructure, and the science of manufacturing oligonucleotide therapeutics. So first off, let me just say thank you for taking the time out of what I know is an incredibly busy schedule to join me for Exploration Science. Thanks for having me. <laughs> so Daniel, could you maybe give me a little bit about your background, um, particularly at Bachem, but in general as well? Yeah, I'm a PhD chemist, uh, and I'm with Bachem for 15 years now. Um, Bachem is a CDMO for tights, peptides, and oligonucleotides. And uh, I started actually as a bench chemist uh, producing peptides and small proteins and did all the synthesis and uh, purification. And then, uh, yeah, uh, was a lot involved in, in CMC development uh, for yeah, new chemical entities. Uh, in my last position, I'm a, I was a vice president manufacturing for peptides, but then I got the opportunity to take over the head oligonucleotides at Bachem, uh, which is a super exciting new field. Yeah. Uh, Bachem started doing oligos in uh, 2018, uh, and a lot has happened since then. So yes. very exciting. Right. Well, and yeah, I think, you know, in, in our community, so I'm, you know, work a lot in the peptide world and, and that's what we think of as Bachem is peptide. And so, um, you know, having gotten into the oligonucleus, oh, sorry, nu oligonucleotide space uh, since 2018, um, are there specific oligonucleotides that, that Bachem specializes in? I mean, there are lots of synergies with peptides, and uh, we are historically experts both in the liquid phase synthesis of, of peptides, but uh, more importantly uh, here in this context, also solid phase synthesis. Uh, and oligos are, are made, uh, I mean, there are different ways to make oligos, but uh, very common is uh, solid phase synthesis. So that was kind of a very easy decision to enter the oligonucleotide field. Uh, the whole CMC, how to deal with uh, you know, regulatory requirements, control strategies, that's very comparable. So there is a lot of long year experience with that actually within Bachem. And, and uh, yeah, dealing with uh, different oligo, types of oligos, modalities. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, historically the, the anti-sense oligos, but uh, nowadays uh, a lot of uh, siRNAs. Mm -hmm. And uh, we see more and more conjugates coming. I mean, the the, the Galnac um, conjugation is uh, it's well established um, to go into the liver as a target. But well, we see more and more oligos uh, targeting other uh, other types of organs, and uh, and um, yeah, we see more complex oligos. The, the oligo itself is becoming more complex, more sophisticated building blocks. Uh, but also the conjugates like lipids, PEGs, even proteins, monoclonal mm -hmm. antibodies. So it's a it's a very exciting field uh, with these new modalities, and, and they are becoming more and more complex. And so, and it sounds like regardless of which type of oligonucleotide Bachem can can handle the, the the chemistry can be a partner for. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we talk about. Uh, in the length, let's say mm -hmm. around no more than 40 typically uh, basis. Uh, but there are a lot of all, all the, you know, the, the common interesting uh, compounds are in that range. Right. And regarding, you know, like different, I guess, therapeutic areas and disease states, I guess we're used to thinking of when, you know, when we think of like the start of biologics and the start of, of, of oligonucleotide therapeutics, Oftentimes, it's been in rare disease, which I know Bachem has certainly had a part in, in manufacturing for rare disease. But how have you seen a transition, um, especially with like the, the mRNA vaccines and whatnot, to towards more sort of um, common diseases? Or can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I, I think the mRNA vaccines opened mm -hmm. the whole field of RNA or let's say genetic medicine. By nature, uh, rare diseases were, were the first targets. 
Mm -hmm. uh, but we see more and more uh, trends towards larger indications, larger populations as well. Uh, and that generates a lot more demand, uh, a more capacity needed, and also big pharma companies um, are getting more and more excited. Uh, so uh, that's certainly a trend. Uh, we will have both uh, rare mm -hmm. disease, small indications, but also large indications. Yeah. And so then I guess, you know, you have this movement again from rare disease to to more like you said larger populations when when you're looking at those those different areas what what do you find are the priorities for manufacturing and have those changed <laughs> yeah that's a it's a good question so the the quantities the demand is very different uh, for rare diseases um, we talk about comparably small batch sizes but when it goes to uh, later clinical phases or even commercial demand for, for huge indications, we talk almost about metric tons of one single oligo. And that's a completely different story than in terms of uh, equipment trains, how to manufacture that, the, the, the whole supply chain challenges, solvent consumptions, sustainability challenges, and, and scalability. So um, large population or large indications for oligos that's really an industrial scale mm -hmm. yeah. and when when you're looking at sort of the the challenges that you see between you know short term and long term how, how do those differ and, and how are you addressing those yeah the short term is it's quite it's quite simple i mean getting ramping up operations getting supply chains up to speed uh, and uh, it's a lot of growth. Huh? We are hire a lot of people and we train them, but we are uh, we are operational uh, for quite a while now. So we have quite a number of oligos manufactured, and um, for the mid and longer term, it's we we continue doing this. So it will be a lot of growth. Uh, we we invest a lot of uh, uh, yeah capex in new equipment, uh, a lot of innovation as well. So there are different ways to make oligos, uh, and we try to, you know, to use all of them whenever they make sense. The individual uh, ways of making oligos, uh, and uh, yeah, innovation helps, uh, especially for the for the larger scale for sustainability, like uh, KPIs like the process mass intensity, the carbon footprint, solvent consumption. For example, we, we invested in continuous chromatography, which mm -hmm. is likely not super interesting in the very small scale, but in the large scale, this is absolutely uh, one of the methods of choice to save mm -hmm. solvent, but at the same time have a very powerful separation. Uh, automation as well and, and digital transformation. So we're going towards electronic batch records, uh, electronic logbooks, uh, getting process data into a plant information system, all these modern uh, yeah, smart factory is a buzzword, but it goes towards a smart factory um, dealing with electronic data and uh, most efficiently handling them. Can you go back a little bit? Can you um, define KPIs? And then also, can you talk about continuous flow chromatography a little bit? Um, in terms of chromatography, the one of the KPIs that defines the um, you know how how efficient the process is is the process mass intensity. That's basically the the kilogram of organics used mm -hmm. to make a kilogram of a drug substance. Mm -hmm. The very simple KPI. Uh, and if this number is very high, that means you have an inefficient process. And and if you scale up a typical lab process to an industrial scale, it it really does matter. Okay. Uh, because we talk about not only metric tons, but thousands of tons or liters of solvents. And, and their highly efficient continuous processes really help to get these KPIs down. Mm -hmm. uh, and the other thing is just simply output uh, capacity. Uh, how long does it take uh, to get out a certain amount of uh, drug substance? Uh, the faster that goes, uh, it's, it speeds up the whole timeline. Right. And for oligos, it's it's uh, I see really um, a very condensed timeline in the whole CMC in the whole development life cycle compared to small molecules or peptides, let's say. So uh, within a few years, uh, these these projects go from preclinical to process performance qualification. Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, so I think yeah. that, that was kind of going to be my next question of like you get into it in 2018 and you're already at, you know at scale for yeah. 
variety. Yeah, it was, was a lot of investment, a lot of hiring, yeah. educating people, educating ourselves as well. Yeah. And uh, we work closely with our clients. So typically we, we co-develop uh, processes also for the equipment. Um, some of the skits that we bought are just what everybody else is using. But for some of them, we really make customized, customized equipment, co-developed for us to fit into our plant, into the facility, to communicate with our tank farm and stuff like that. So pretty, pretty uh, yeah, exciting and innovative right. field and uh, a lot of work within short time. Yeah. And so just sort of to help educate me, when you say um, skid, what is in the skid? What is that? What's, what oh, it is can that? be it can be a chromatography skid okay. or, a, 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 you know, a, you know that the classical way to synthesize oligos is it's almost like a chromatographic skid. It's pumps and uh, mm -hmm. and valves mostly. Yeah. So these sort of skids, right? Right. And how many? You know. So well, actually, I guess maybe I'll back up a little bit even more. Bachem. So you're headquartered in is it Switzerland? That's right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then where do you have your your largest facilities? Yeah. So the headquarters site in Switzerland is the largest in terms of capacity, GMP uh, capacity. Uh, we have two other GMP sites in, in the U.S., in California, one in Los Angeles and one in San Diego. Uh, and then we have uh, a research-grade non-GMP facility in the U.K. And we have sales offices uh, in, in Japan. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, not to forget, we have one large-scale production unit in the southern part of Switzerland as well. So they do... They have some legacy business, small molecule uh, APIs, uh, and, and also they do um, you know, uh, backward integration. They do in-house manufacturing of starting materials, complex building blocks. Right. And do you do oligo and peptide at all those other facilities? Like, are they all in the same building, or did you have to make new buildings? So like they, how that work? Yeah, recent, recent investments were focused on the headquarters site, yeah. but for sure that's... Uh, uh, always uh, closely watched and followed uh, what we're going to do. Um, I think uh, one one decision has been made to expand uh, not only the site here, the, the headwater site. We have a, a new building under construction now. Uh, it's, a, it's a massive 170,000 uh, square foot. Mm -hmm. And half of that will be oligos. The other half will be peptides. Mm -hmm. So it's a massive capacity and it will be operational in 2024. Right. So lots of design work and uh, and planning involved there. Wow. Uh, and uh, for the longer term, we are looking into an additional additional site in Switzerland. Okay. Wow. So so you were in peptide for how? I guess you said you've been at Bachem for fifteen years. So yeah, maybe yeah, it was early, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm probably fourteen years peptides. Huh? But uh, since twenty eighteen, I also did yeah. kind of both the solid phase part of, of of production part of oligos was in my responsibility from the beginning. And are there? Um, I mean, we already talked about sort of the ease of scalability for oligos. Are there other differences that you've seen between peptide and oligo? Um, the maturity of processes is uh, probably. I mean, that's clear. It's it's higher for peptides because there are a lot of uh, people have a lot more experience, ourselves, mm -hmm. our com uh, customers as well. So uh, for the oligos, the timelines are condensed mm -hmm. and uh, and you need to you need to balance how much time you want to invest in, in a process development. And, and we need to be ready to produce very fast. And it's typically early, early stage, early phase. So the, the process maturity is less compared to, to peptides probably, but, but that's, a, that's a development that will change for sure. And um, regulatory hurdles, very well settled and, and very clear for peptides and for oligos. Not so much. Um, and it, it depends as well if it's a, it's a rare disease with unmet medical need, or if it's a huge indication, then probably the, the same regulations apply then for the established drugs on the market. So there are quite some differences. But besides that, I think it's very similar. Okay. And I guess, see, so you have U.S. customers, but you have obviously global customers, European customers. And so um, are, do you find that the regulatory agencies are similar across the pond or are there are there big differences? In well, I, I, 
I had to do with the FDA, the US FDA a lot. I mean, I, I hosted, I don't know how many, several pre-approval inspections and general GMP inspections. And I think with the FDA, you know what to expect. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you, you know what they what they expect. And, and uh, mm -hmm. if you have a proper GMP system in place, then uh, then uh, you know how, how to deal with that. Uh, and uh, I'm very proud. I have a clean sheet in terms of that. Yeah. But um, I don't see big differences with European agencies. So there, there is a mutual agreement between the European agency and the Swiss. So we get inspected by the local Swiss uh, authority regularly. Uh, and uh, they are very uh, helpful in terms of they, they are very interested in innovation in new technologies because ultimately it's 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 an innovation that helps patients so they kind of advise and and kind of support new technologies and innovation mm -hmm. yeah so going back to your your customers how how early do you typically engage with a customer um, I mean we we cover from preclinical to commercial everything so that means from the first let's say talks lot mm -hmm. uh, to later clinical stages everything um, and then there are a lot of tech transfers from third party from the customer um, so typically you start with some sort of process that has been applied elsewhere and then you you know, you know make it fit uh, fit into the facility and improve it and fit for purpose for the clinical stage. So I think we are in all phases and in all stages. And I remember one of the bigger peptides that we have uh, on the market, um, we started with a tech transfer in, in clin clinical phase three already. So it's it's doable. Wow. Right? And it's yeah. a lot of work in terms of uh, regulatory package and everything. But um, I think there is a lot of flexibility there. And I mean, Bachem's been around for a while, right? Like, when was Bachem founded? Bachem was founded in 1971. Yeah. Uh, started uh, as an amino acid supplier, liquid phase uh -huh. peptides, and then later at some point, solid phase synthesis. So that's 50 years. Yeah. So, so there's some know-how built into the yeah, company. Absolutely. As well. Yeah. Yeah. And and how big is Bachem? How many employees? It's a large company. Yeah, yeah, we we are becoming a large company. It's uh, around seventeen hundred people. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's it's getting there definitely. Yeah. So, um, you know, maybe you could talk a little bit about, uh, you know, we've talked so we talked about challenges. We've talked about some of the opportunities that Bachem's taken to overcome some of those challenges. What do you what do you see that the future being for oligonucleotide at Bachem? Like, what do, what do you hope that will look like in the next you know five years? Um, I mean, we are, we, our vision is uh, to become one of the top players as a CDMO, and the offering is not just providing the products; it's the whole the whole package, um, services from process development, uh, analytical, regulatory, providing the product for sure, having a supply chain to support all that. So it's kind of end to end um, the the whole need of the customers. Uh, and uh, yeah, as I said, I see a lot of uh, um, a lot of movement, a lot of lot of development in terms of complexity of the drug substance. Mm -hmm. So we'll we'll definitely be happy to to accommodate that. I think it's one of the the strength of Bachem. Uh, we can really handle also more complex molecules, mm -hmm. including conjugation. Uh, and uh, our our analytical experts are really we are very proud of our mass spec and NMR experts. I think we can really help a lot also when the regulatory bar rises and we need to clarify or, or investigate about more trace impurities, including in starting materials and all that stuff. So I think um, we are ready to to grow. Uh, we invest heavily, uh, as I said, in, into a new building and into if needed an additional site uh, so we, we we will provide the capacity mm -hmm. uh, and at least some of the oligos will go very big so that's uh, that's the ambition to provide those can you um sorry just going back you know you mentioned uh, trace impurities uh, what is there a difference between again peptide world and oligo world of like what's acceptable um, and even what one expects you know, as far as impurity level. Well, it's it's a bit early to you know to <laughs> to to really define that. It's it's kind of 
we will see. There are there are plenty of oligos in in clinical stages and and submissions planned, mm -hmm. and we will see what the agencies will will reply. Uh, basically, uh, it's a question of of safety, a question of tox data. Uh, generally, the impurities are not of of a particular toxicological concern, but you still need to demonstrate that. It's the same for peptides, but um, for peptides, we have the situation that a lot of peptides are generics. So they are kind of, uh, the bar is very high because uh, there, there is no specific medical need for another generic of a peptide. Mm -hmm. So the bar is very high there with, uh, with uh, the, you know, you're, you might be familiar with this ANDA guideline. Uh, the purity is way over 99% and single impurities below 0.1. And this is a different world. So for oligos, we are far away from that. Uh, but we will we will get stepwise um, towards um, towards higher expectations as well. And then something else you mentioned was the sort of the complexity of oligos. You can see moving forward, and I've seen a lot of companies. It's like all about like circular RNA and and other like you said conjugates. Uh, I know, and in, in the, on the peptide side, I've seen partnerships with um, Bachem and Valentic and Enzitag to sort to help on the, the the peptide side. Are you also investing in some of those exploratory partnerships on the oligo side? Yeah, absolutely. So we we do have a couple of those partnerships. There, are, most of them are not yet published. Mm -hmm. um, we always work together with innovators, we innovate as well, but sometimes people come and say, look, we have this new idea, this new technology, are you interested in that? And we are really actively screening new technologies. Uh, we have a couple of ideas um, in, and invest in that. And and uh, and that's definitely also the, the future for Oligos. I think that's something that I always appreciated about Bachem was the, the investment in innovation. You know, I like anyone who hasn't gone to the, the website, like the YouTube, a uh, uh, site for Bachem needs to go. There's a lot of really great videos and webinars, um, and then publications as well and presentations. So, so like I said, for me, that's something I've always appreciated. Um, even when I was a grad student, like I would go through, you know, Bachem's website, and and there was like always like a white paper that was of interest. Um, what you know, you've been there for a while. You must like Bachem. But what are some of the, the other things that you like about the company? Yeah, the innovation is really a, a good part of of. Uh scientific curiosity is this was always my my interest so and if you have ideas in terms of science trying things out you can really do that at Bakem and you see that in terms of scientific publications uh, and, and uh, process patterns and, and just innovation and innovation is is the difference between innovation and, an, and a good idea is the, the execution you need to add value you need to really come up with something that that is useful for the customer, for the patient, for the company, for whoever, but it needs to generate value, and and that that's a lot of fun. Huh? So I like that, and most of the people in in R and D and also production they like that. Right, and I think that's an important point to any students or postdocs that are considering a career that it, it can go well beyond the you know typical pharmaceutical job where you're where you're doing drug discovery that there's there is innovation in manufacturing and and there are places to be creative and uh, yeah and it's it's not, innovation is not for everyone some people simply just prefer to do kind of a standard production or so and we, all, we can also provide that so we have yeah. the we have all these options mm -hmm. and um yeah um if you are if you are in the company for a while you can also switch between you know r d production you can go to the u.s sites and come back and so it's a lot of a lot of uh, things you can do. Right, yeah, a lot of opportunities. I think that's great. Well, um, yeah, I guess, you know, I really appreciate your time. I think that, like I said, I think this is something that people need to to really take a step back and, and look at these these different roles that people can have in, in a variety of, of fields. And and I hope students and postdocs take note. Um, I think it's, so, you know, with the, as far as like oligo and peptide, um, I've been saying it lately, the, these are things that are, they're married to each other, like oligo and peptide will always go together. So, so I'm really happy to have um, my first oligo based podcast. And um, I, again, I just, I appreciate your time. I know that it is limited and, and I thank you very much. You're very, very welcome. I appreciate it. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Exploration Science. As always, we welcome your feedback and suggestions for topics that you'd like to see covered. You can leave those suggestions in the comments below 
or tag us on LinkedIn. You can also find this podcast available as a YouTube series by searching Exploration Science. Thanks again for tuning in.